It's a pristine wilderness like no other. These are some of the largest and last remaining evergreen forests on the Indochina Peninsula. But across the land, the Cambodian government has allowed agricultural developers to slash, burn and plant cash crops. And illegal logging has spread out to nearby protected forests, leading to a timber pillaging frenzy. 101 East investigates the wholesale destruction of Cambodia's rainforests. This is Cambodia's wild east, where the Mekong River borders Prelong Forest one of the last remaining evergreen woodlands in Southeast Asia. It's also the domain of environmental warrior and lawyer Ut Leng, who's made it his mission to protect the forest. When I saw logging companies cutting trees and transporting logs right in front of me, I was committed to defend the forest. Today, Leng is gathering evidence of illegal logging to pass on to conservation agencies and foreign governments. A joint Taiwanese-Cambodian-owned company called Think Biotech can legally clear trees here, but only within a specified boundary. So where are we going now? To uh, film the, to, to see the recent tree of Mr. Chan. But for now, it looks like we won't be travelling further than the company roadblock. Much more, yeah? That's much more. Make a small problem. Leng is investigating claims the company is pressuring villagers to give up the precious resin trees they're legally entitled to tap. The company says if you don't accept the money, you get nothing. The company cuts them down anyway. We take another road that leads to the boundary between a protected forest and the company concession. Here we find Yi Bun Shem tapping resin trees as his family has done for three generations. The trees provide a sustainable living for his family and are supposed to be protected. But he has something devastating to show activist Leng. <laughs> Chem says he refused to accept any money for the trees, but think Biotech cut them down anyway, 2,000 of them. Leng records the carnage and takes the satellite coordinate of every fallen tree. I feel very upset for the lost forest from which I make my livelihood. When I came here, I'd always see many monkeys jumping and screaming all over the place. Now it's quiet. As we film, other villagers are scavenging for leftovers. Many sell timber back to the companies that chop down their trees in the first place. This is a village divided. Some here are trying to protect the forest. Others are paid by the company to tear it down. Deputy village chief Seng Luang is on the side of conservation, even though he's an official from Cambodia's ruling party. We all really want to stop the forest from being destroyed, but we don't know how to do it. But you are a government official, and your own government is allowing this to happen. What do you think of that? The people dare not say anything. The royal government already granted the concession. The government is like our father, and we are their children. As we drive off into the darkness, the forest comes alive with activity. On a road directly out of the protected area, we encounter a rattling convoy of timber tractors. So this is illegally logged? It's completely illegal, because they cut inside the area. 
then in a clearing, a roadside stop and what Leng says is a ranger post. So what are illegal loggers doing at a ranger station? They waiting to take the money from the driver, you see. Accusing rangers of taking bribes is a serious claim. I take Leng's allegation to Net Pectra, a senior Ministry of Environment official. An activist told us that uh, they were paying bribes to the rangers. Do you believe that would be the case? This is an illegal act and the ministry would not tolerate this. We do not support those who abuse the law and any activist who saw such activities should gather evidence and report to the Ministry of Environment so we can take legal action. Handing over evidence is precisely what Leng has been doing for years. Using GPS tracking, satellite imagery and drones, he forensically exposes the big illegal loggers. I gather evidence in order to make reports about forest crimes. He's infiltrated their syndicates and recorded reams of damning evidence. The picture that emerges is one of an environmental apocalypse orchestrated on a national scale. But it seems the government is not listening. I used to submit it to the government on several occasions, but my reports were deemed dissenting, negative and baseless against the government. This is the destruction of pristine wilderness and ecosystems. The companies have another word for it, reforestation. They're planting cash crops like rubber and acacia. We've followed the trail of resin trees cut down from Prelong Forest. They've ended up as plywood. The chairman of Think Biotech is Lu Chu Chang. He says he can do what he wants and his government granted concession. In my area, I must have clean all. In my concession. Because this area must be clean, then we plant the tree. Others area, we cannot touch. Do you clear timber outside of the concessions? Mm, no. We spoke to a villager who said he was told that if the company couldn't buy the trees, they would take them anyway. Does that happen? I never buy the, from the, 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 the village. I just attack from my concession. Lou admits protected timber might end up in his sawmill, but blames any violation on unscrupulous contractors. He can't explain why big coordinated logging convoys are travelling at night. Why do they travel at night time? They travel at night time? Yes. Usually, I know they travel at daytime. The company chairman claims he's supporting poor local communities, offering jobs to clear the forest so that something else can be planted. I will create a new town for the local people to set up school, to set up everything in this commune. That is my goal. In Cambodia's southwest lies a natural treasure. The Cardamom Ranges contain the second largest virgin rainforest on mainland Southeast Asia. Here too, illegal logging is rampant. But the criminals are up against a determined force intent on stopping them. So you conducted effective surveillance? Yes. Good, yeah. good, good, good. And uh, we discovered that uh, the illegal logging starts again. Yep. American conservationist Sawana Gauntlet is being briefed on the latest spike in illegal logging. Can you show me the exact roads where you went? She leads the non-government organization Wildlife Alliance. They're supported by the government to work with police and local rangers to uphold the law. So it's out of hand. These kingpins have their own kingdom and they, they have their informants in place, they have their local people, they have uh, their tractors, their uh, buffalo carts, they have everything in place. 
So Anna's team includes former soldiers from Eastern Europe, some who served in the French Foreign Legion. Today, on a road leading from a national park, they stop a procession of vehicles overloaded with timber. The biggest role of our foreign law enforcement officers is to be watchdogs because good governance is the weakest point of the government agencies in this country. It's very, very important that each case be followed up. Large swathes of the cardamoms have been handed over by the government to big agricultural companies and developers. Those areas have been stripped of valuable timber. Now the bordering protected forest is being ravaged too. On patrol, the Wildlife Alliance officers intercept a slow-moving target with a prized and valuable haul. It is luxury timber. Wildlife Alliance ranger Volodymyr Mox tells us this man could face up to five years in prison for his load of luxury hardwood timber. It might have been sold for many thousands of dollars had it reached its final destination. It is very expensive and it's very heavy. It's, if you put it to the water, it's going to be underwater. And it's, it has specific smell. The rangers confiscate the timber and seize the loggers' tools of trade as well. They must have permission for chancel. It has to be exact name of operator. It has to be exact area where he have right to cut. Look at this. That is incredible. 2,300 chainsaws. That's extraordinary. In only two years, the last two years. So what does this represent to you? For us, these are weapons of mass destruction. Each chainsaw will destroy a minimum of one hectare of rainforest. Not, not just cut, clear cut. I'm heading into the wilderness with Wildlife Alliance enforcers, police and rangers. They have intelligence of an illegal logging camp deep in a protected area. After walking seven kilometres, it's the camp dog that gives away the location. It's a rough life for the loggers and there's evidence they've been here for weeks. You cannot live before. You cannot live in National Park. And to send a message, this forest camp is destroyed. A camp dweller tells us he only arrived here the day before and had been looking for dead trees to cut fence posts. But he and the other occupants will be looking for somewhere else to sleep tonight. Nearby, the team discovers another illegal activity. The loggers have constructed kilns to make charcoal. So when were they last here, do you think? Just run. They just run away from us. And they have chance of it, for sure, because how you can make the charcoal without wood and without chance. Despite all we've seen, an official with Cambodia's Ministry of Environment downplays the situation. We accept that cutting down remaining forests does happen. However, large-scale logging no longer exists. There are medium-sized and small-scale operations. But the evidence suggests otherwise. Just five months ago, Leng filmed this large-scale illegal logging on land leased by an advisor to Cambodian Prime Minister Hun Sen. But long-time conservationists like Sawana back up Leng, saying Cambodian forests are being systematically exterminated. Big-time loggers are moving in and they're headed by kingpins. Uh, who have carved out each their own geographical quadrant, if you will. And nowadays, there is no more forest inside the concession, so they use this piece of paper to go outside, inside the national park, 
cut as much wood as they possibly can, and then launder it on the market. In this small pocket of the cardamoms at least, Wildlife Alliance is fighting to hold back the surge of forest destruction. Is our reality just a bubble in the middle of this country? I've often thought about this, and I think that the feeling is there. And outside of the bubble, the floodgates have well and truly opened. Across the other side of the country, environmental activist Oit Lang is taking us to Phnom Prit Wildlife Sanctuary, near the Vietnamese border. It's a sanctuary in name only. Here too, the government has allowed select companies to log in assigned areas. And the timber travel trespass almost every day, every night, and nobody dare to stop. We're heading to the core zone of the sanctuary, which holds some of the forest's most precious timber. So th this is the really special forest, is it? Yeah, yeah. A ahead of us? Yeah, it's over there, it's over there. We don't have to travel far to see how valuable this forest is. It's a hazardous trip for these motorcycle riders, but it's going to be worth it for them. They're carrying valuable bang timber. <laughs> The logger claims they cut the timber inside a company concession, but Lang says there's no such valuable timber there left to cut. I think they lie to us. It's not true. So what he's saying is not the truth. He actually stole it from the protected, protected areas. Area, yeah. Yeah. Each piece of timber can be sold to traders for as much as $250. This is probably a $10,000 convoy. A sign declares this area is deserving of the highest level of protection. So no one's taking much notice, are they? Uh, not of the government. Government's saying officially you can't log. USAID, European Union, big sign saying the core zone, precious forest, it's still being logged. Sometimes I cry. I feel disappointed because I'm not able to protect the forest. I see that the destruction is so big, but no one helps to protect it. The government does not arrest the tree cutters, but it arrests the forest activists. The companies allowed to operate in this forest are sensitive about their activity. But the sawmills are easy to find. The government gave the green light to reopen the sawmills that had been closed. As we can see, 100,000 hectares of the forest were cleared completely. It's now extinct and will never return. We find a large stockpile of sawn timber. The men guarding it say it was confiscated and this place is a ranger post. It's another unlikely story. We don't see the sign of the ranger station name. We don't see the forest ranger here. The further we drive, the more sawmills Leng finds. It's important for him to record every discovery. But calling out illegal activity can be perilous in Cambodia. Brave in the capital Phnom Penh, a proud son remembers a brave father, an icon of Cambodia's environment movement. Udom is the son of Chut Wuti, who paid the ultimate price for his activism. He really wanted me to love nature. What he wanted was to stop the destruction of Cambodian forests. Seven years ago, while investigating a logging company, Chut Wuti was shot dead. He's remembered for confronting the most powerful illegal loggers in this country. Those he upset were timber businessmen. Both back then and today, timber businessmen are powerful people who work in the government. The investigation into the killing of Chut Wuti 
was closed amid conflicting accounts of what happened. Udom is now following in the footsteps of his father. There are a lot of unforgettable memories of his heroism. He was a brave man, a good father, and a respectful leader. Treading a similar path to Chutwuti, Leng navigates a dangerous course. The royal government is involved in corruption, and therefore the government, armed forces, and the companies hate the forest defenders. My drone was smashed several times. I received death threats. I fled Cambodia to Thailand, to Siam Reap province. However, I still continue my work. Leng and his team are camped out for the night. They've been tipped off there is timber on the move. And where it's going is an international scandal. To find out more, we travel to Cambodia's border with Vietnam on a stretch of road Leng is most familiar with. <laughs> He worked for uh, the timber tycoon. Along the road, Leng recognises spotters for the timber smugglers. They're here to report anything that can upset business, including the appearance of activists like him. A small problem for me. Yeah. I said, never scared. This is the official border, but it's not the favoured route of the timber smugglers. They've made their own, with about 20 illegal crossings here. And by the time you see the checkpoint over there. There is a rampant illegal industry smuggling timber across this border. But despite the work of Leng and others exposing it, the EU recently struck a deal that will allow Vietnam to certify its own timber exports to Europe. Vietnam is effectively laundering, then exporting illegally logged timber from Cambodian forests. I'm fed up with the European Union. They are donors, yet they engage in the timber trade with Vietnam, even though they know that Vietnam is a rascal and a thief who steals the timber. The EU says the deal will only proceed if it's convinced Vietnam is acting lawfully. But there is no doubt about this illegal cross-border trade. It's something even high-ranking officials in the government admit. There is still timber going across the border because there is a black market in that area. These activities are illegal. That's why the Ministry of Environment, as well as other relevant ministries and border officials, are cracking down on forest crimes. Back in the Cardamom Mountains, Wildlife Alliance foreign enforcer Inescu Dragos plans another day's patrol with local rangers and police. Illegal logging and poaching go hand in hand here. When the locals are going in the forest uh, to collect fruits or whatever, they are bringing with them the homemade gun snares, so they're going to hunt and uh, set up traps in the same time. Are they entitled to hunt for their own use? Hunting in a protected area, it's illegal. And I will go back to Barcelona. Illegal, but rife. Fortunately, sometimes the hunters get caught. A good job, guys, for what you did yesterday. Uh, really happy you confiscated the pythons. But it's going to happen today. We're going to go up the river and uh, release the snakes. The organisation has seven ranger stations scattered over a large area of the cardamoms. But as forests diminish, so do its natural inhabitants at a time of great demand on the black market. So is the idea to, to trap and bring these animals back alive or is it to kill? Both. Traditional medicine has always been the biggest drive, along with restaurants, for the animal parts that are trafficked to China and Vietnam and they are uh, range from the charismatic elephants and tigers and bears all the way down to lizards and snakes and turtles and tortoises. The pythons are released into an area where they should be safe. But most of Cambodia's so-called protected areas are anything but. Like Snul Wildlife Sanctuary near the Vietnam border. 
This is a satellite image from 10 years ago. This is how it looks today, almost completely bereft of animals and forest. Maybe 10 years ago, so here is uh, it's jungle and a lot of forest and uh, a lot of the wildlife, wild animal like elephant, tiger, rabbit. What actually happened here a few years back? The private company come to destroy, to terminate the forest here. In this poor country, people are living off the land as they always have. But the lure of fast money is pushing many to ravage their irreplaceable forests. Promoted by logging companies, seemingly condoned by Cambodia's government, the largest rainforests in Southeast Asia may soon be a wilderness lost.